Okay, we're gonna get started. So, questions for anyone here, Ryan? Mark, when you kind of look around in college football these days, you know programs like Alabama and TCU that built their programs originally on defense are giving up a lot of points. Um, when you look at your defense, how do you feel about them complementing your offense? Do you feel like, and what constitutes good defense these days? A win. <laughs> you know, I think it's the bottom line, and, and it's it's always, uh, you know, everybody's goal is perfection. You know, we'd love a shutout. We'd love to score 60 points every week and be perfect at everything, but that's that just doesn't happen. That's why, you know, players are committed to each other. Coaches are committed to the players, and everybody's committed to to getting better. But there's there's always things that you don't anticipate when human beings are involved. And, uh, you know, the old adage of you play the game for all that all that stuff is is true um and it's it's i i love uh, having the that early game and sitting at home watching you know other people suffer through those things going wow you know that, that can happen to somebody else um but i've never seen it i'm you know never seen a game without a missed tackle i've never seen i've never ever seen a game without a missed assignment and again as long as everybody is committed to improving upon those things and you know we're putting them in the right position to to you know structurally do that uh you know that we can we can live with that matt wogan booming the ball out of the end zone how important is that to the team and what's he improved on the most just consistency and uh, a perfect segue right there for our players of the game. Um, shared uh, on special teams, Matt Wogan and, and Aiden Schneider uh, uh, will share the, the player of the game honor there. Uh, both those guys did a, did a great job as far as, you know, the offensive side of me is concerned. Way too many field goals, but that it's good that we made them um, and had a good operation of, of kind of our, our speed field goal there right before the, the end of the first half. Uh, and then Matt Matt did a great job of, of just be, you know being consistent uh, and, and doing 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 a great job of, of you know uh, preventing them to, to to get good field position. Uh, Scouts of the week or the scout of the week on on special teams was uh, Taylor Stinson, uh, defensive player of the game. Uh, sorry, whoops, was uh, DeForest Buckner, scout defender, which is a tailback, is J.J. Jones. Uh, player of the game on offense was Dwayne Stanford. Uh, probably most notably, f as far as we're concerned, is helping escorting Taylor Alley to the end zone there. It was a huge, huge block by him, a great hustle play. A guy that has made a ton of great hustle plays on special teams as well. Uh, and then uh, Dylan Kane uh, was the scout defensive player, the or scout offensive player of the week. Has you had an impact old play? What have you made of the development of Tony Brooks James, and um, what continues to what do you, can you see out of him that allows him to earn those reps? I, th I thought uh, bo both both the young running backs did some good things. They did some young running back things. Um, they'll, they'll watch that film today and tomorrow, and you know, smack themselves upside upside the head a few times of, of missed opportunities of just you know point of attack yardage and and part of that is is just getting lined up correctly having the right aiming point and having the right eyes and for whatever reason we had one of those two or three uh didn't didn't work um but they're competing they're they're both tough guys Tosh Tosh Griffin and, and Tony uh I think nothing but great things to to come for both of them Mike with as much time as Jeff has spent in the program after Vernon having a chance to watch him play yesterday. Is there anything that you think Vernon could could learn or take away from what Jeff was doing, given how long he's spent in the program? I think you can learn from every every snap. As a quarterback, you, you, you can play every single play of every single game if you're sitting at home watching the NFL and you're trying to identify you know, pressure or coverage or, or, you know, schematically what, what either side's trying to do. You, you can do that every single rep of practice. You're, you know, you're watching a guy doing one-on-one. -on -one. Every quarterback should be literally playing every, every rep in their, in their mind because you can't get enough reps of, of, you know, all the things that happen of you've got a perfect scenario and somebody slips and you have to get off to, you know, to your next guy, whatever, you know, whatever it is, um, those, those things, you just, you cannot get enough reps as a quarterback. And so, you know, for Vernon, a young guy in the system, you know, can, has to take advantage of that even, even, even better than somebody who, who has. 
remember um, Coach Wooden used to say that he used to uh, when Did he you say was Coach going Wood to or Coach Wooden? Oh, John Wooden, yeah. Okay used to say that if he was going to be critical of his team, he tended to be after a win rather than after a loss. And I was wondering with Pac-12 conference opening up, there might be a little bit more urgency about correcting some of those mistakes. And kind of in that light, your criticism may be a bit more pointed after a win than after last week. Yeah, that's. I think that's an old adage that that does play out a lot. Is is you can be harder on on guys after success than you are after you know quote unquote failure. Um, but at the same time, you have to improve every single week. You have to improve out of out of getting patted on the back, uh, just out of you know getting yelled at or scrutinized or whatever whatever the case may be. And that that's part of the the tough you know psychological grind that is the season is you have to you have to stay in fix it mode you have to be positive you have to to all point the same direction through great times and through through the valleys Matt. Uh, Brenner got the start at right guard and then it seems like Voler got in quite a bit as well on the left side what'd you think of those two individually and then your offense as a whole or the offensive line as a whole yeah the the offensive line kind of told the tale of the offense in general just you know again some good a little sluggish, uh, too many penalties um, that, that were kind of unforced. Um, and Doug did some good things, did some things that he'll he'll want to correct um, in in place of Cameron, who was not available. Um, and then Evan is another guy that those those guys just need to play more. You know, they're 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 guys that have been in the rotation, whether it's with Cameron Hunt or, or Matt Pearson. Um, and and Evan Voller has done some great things in practice, and just needs needs that that seasoning and 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 uh excited about his future as well Chantel, do you have a question yeah uh coach i was just curious travis wilson may or may not play this weekend against you guys and they have him and kendall thompson curious for your thoughts on both of those quarterbacks and kind of the defensive game plan going into something with two quarterbacks who are pretty different um, well, yeah, I guess first and foremost is Devontae Booker. You know, whoever's in there, they, they, they play off Devontae Booker differently. Um, and uh, they, they played a, th- a third guy this week as well. And so, you know, again, you're, you're preparing schematically to obviously to, to stop Booker, job one, and then the, the play action game and or complementary quarterback run, all the other things that, that come off of those uh, – Guys, it's kind of equal parts assignment football, and then rally to the ball. Got to get multiple multiple uh, bodies on on a Booker. Andrew, yeah, Mark, with with Utah's staff turning over quite a bit in the off season, um, how deep do you have to go to scout the tendencies of the of the coaches who are now in those spots? That's a great question, uh, and we we won't know that answer until we we are out on the field because that that they played you know between um, Fresno State, Utah State, and Michigan, very very different teams uh, from us and different teams from from each other, and so there's not a, a great you know vault of information. Uh, we know you know the tradition of Utah uh, and Coach Winningham has been great defense, and and you know there's certainly no exception this year. They dominated. Uh, these games uh, defensively uh, and put themselves in great position, whether it's pick sixes, turnovers, uh, just field position swings. They've done a, done a tremendous job. Um, Dimmick is a dynamic player guy. You know, he, he was, I know he's been banged up here, but a guy, that guy always kind of got overshadowed by Nate Orchard and always, he, he always seemed to show up just as much as, as those other guys. And they always have the, the six, two, six, three corners and, and uh, they do a tremendous job. Rob? As a poll voter yourself, is that stuff just for entertainment at this point? Do you wonder how much of an influencer it might be on the playoff committee? Is it sort of percolates on things before they start publishing uh, rankings and such? I couldn't give any less thought to that right now. Uh, um, I don't know. I think, again, for I think that's purely for, for the media and for the fans to, to be involved in. And certainly the, the 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 playoff element i guess it's that you know that much more important um so maybe i should pay attention a little bit more and be more vocal uh yeah, are. yeah exactly and that that's the great you know the great thing about college football now with the playoff is is you know i've said that before if, as soon as they announced whether it was the you know the bcs top whatever or the 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 whatever they call it now the first four or what you know that's instant fodder for for the rest of the year and, and get everybody excited about for for weeks on end Mike? Does Utah's defense um, 
show a pretty good balance or are they or are they a defense that relies on one aspect to try and make a team one sided um well they're they're very are you saying as far as their scheme or what they try to take away or their or i guess i'm not just, just quite sure an overall sense of of what they do yeah they're they're a little bit different than they've been in the past um in these first three games which again i don't know exactly how much that will play into to our game um you know they're, they're based as a as a four down front they're a four three base defense with with nickel and and dime type options like like a lot of people uh and they want to get after you with four guys if they can uh then they also have the ability to to play a base you know basically a man free uh single high defense single high zone and then various combinations in in third downs and and they you know i think if they absolutely had their choice they'd love to rush forward and see you know see how much they could get after you and you know they're always going to pressure people though uh that's been you know his mo for a long time and again they've been really good at it for for a long time in the back so you played utah last year obviously in the past couple of years what have you seen on film that they've improved on in this year so far um well, I, 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 from they're they're different, you know, from from our prep last year. Again, some of the the, the principles are different. Um, they're they're again their front four is really good. Um, uh, very dynamic guys. They 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 come off the ball extremely hard and and uh, run to the ball. I mean, it, it's, again, it's a it's a system that they have in place that they they believe in a lot, uh, and they're not afraid to to press anybody. They're not afraid to to get in people's faces and and challenge you that way. Um, and you know, they do, again, they're they're a very very good defensive football team. Not not to say anything, take anything away from their offense or their special teams, which are also the special teams are another another animal entirely um but you asked about that so did braylon show enough to warrant the wildcat being used throughout the, next, the rest of the season i think he definitely showed that in high school you know of, of, of being a high school quarterback and 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 seeing the the you know ver- variety of scheme that he he played with in high school uh we've seen that and so you know we'll we'll, we'll see i guess Rob? impressions of Lockie's play after watching it on film um okay you know I think it, um in 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 a lot of ways did a good job managing the 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 game there at the beginning you know a couple throwaways uh put the ball in in, in a couple good spots you know if you're gonna have a, a good incompletion had that um you know took the one sack there uh, to to back us up which which wasn't good and and just you know He'll he'll look at the film and see see some of the things he did just in terms of rhythm and timing and balance um, that he you know for a first time guy that's very very much to be expected. Andrew Chantel. Uh, yeah, I got Mark. You guys are kind of down at eighty eighth in the country right now in third down percentage, and you're kind of near the middle in fourth down. The Hockey scored a ton of points, so. It, in some ways, it looks like maybe that's just a moot point. But are you concerned to kind of keeping the chains going uh, and how that's gone so far? Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, not necessarily for those numbers. We want to be great on on first and second down. And you know, if you're if it's second and two and you convert the second down, then you know third down doesn't doesn't happen. Uh, and and so you know, at this point in the season, there's going to be some huge swings in in percentages of of whatever you know red zone third down fourth down all the all the different kind of uh you know quantifiable things those those numbers will swing back and forth as the season goes anything else oh everyone remembers uh johnny month's tennessee game and, and he scored again Yesterday, how has the other parts of his game evolved since he was a freshman to get him? Johnny's improved a ton, um, and this, uh, you know, that 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 uh, Tennessee game was what's the right word? Um, I don't want to say lucky, serendipitous, maybe that was what it was of of kind of how you know th- they were defending certain plays that he was in, and and it, it all kind of fell together. Um, not that he didn't earn it. Don't that's you know it's it's just kind of how things happen, game to game. Um, and but you know went through the normal peaks and valleys of, of being a young guy and, and he's he's blocking better he's running better he's catching better and so we're excited about about his development absolutely 
Okay.